The thing I'm very excited about is we have um, a breakthrough technology where we found a way, one of our brilliant professors, uh, Professor Long, has found a way in his team to um, actually augment the, the efficiency of cellular photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. So we found a way to unlock maybe 40% additional productivity wow. of plants right. that grow food. So that is technology that's going to be, I think, central to the next green revolution. Wow. Many, many years ago, I'm giving away my age, when people bought a TV, your mom or your grandma actually went and sewed a, a little curtain for that, like a, like a pillow cover, right? And you put that on there, and you were only allowed to open, only some authorized people in the house were allowed to open it. 6 p.m., we have to wait, the Rudashan needs to come on. So the expensive robots today are kind of you know, similar to that. What we're trying to do is the images on the right. The middle image is essentially showing you histology. What are the cell types in the tissue? And in this particular case, it's a piece of prostate tissue. So we've colored all the epithelial cells green. We've colored everything else purple. And in the third image, we have zeroed out everything that is purple, right? So since this is a computational or digital image, uh, you can do that. You can say, I'm not interested in non-epithelial cells. Zero that out. And in epithelial cells, I'm going to project on Gleason grading using artificial intelligence and machine learning, and that's the result you get. I can tell you what the Gleason grade is without having a human ever look at the sample. Oh, so we're opening up and designing a new kind of innovation platform mm -hmm. with a, you might say, a mothership or a fathership in Chicago, right. which is our you know, world home city, right. home base, right. uh, which incidentally has more bandwidth than anywhere else, and that's an important aspect. Mm -hmm. And But links uh, not just regionally, but internationally, mm -hmm. and strong partners. You know, everything virtually, if, as long as your mathematical models are accurate. We're increasingly finding that in addition to the molecular basis of disease, we need to understand the spatial behavior of the disease. And that's where imaging really comes in. So I see a small subset of uh, useful genomic markers merging with imaging uh, and then using AI uh, to make sense of it in, in all cases.